Chapter 49, Percy. Four hours. That's how long it took the fastest horse on the planet to get from Alaska to San Francisco Bay, heading straight over the water down the northwest coast. That's also how long it took for Percy's memory to return completely. The process had started in Portland when he had drunk the Gorgon's blood, but his past life had still been maddeningly fuzzy. Now, as they headed back into Olympian God's territory, Percy remembered everything. The war with Kronos, his 16th birthday at Camp Half-Blood, his trainer Chiron the Centaur, and his best friend Grover, his brother Tyson, and most of all, Annabeth. Two great months of dating, and then BOOM! He'd been abducted by the alien known as Hera, or Juno, or whatever. Eight months of his life stolen. Next time Percy saw the Queen of Olympus, he was definitely going to give her a goddess-sized slap upside the head. His friends and family must be going out of their minds. If Camp Jupiter was in such bad trouble, he can only guess what Camp Half-Blood must be facing without him. Even worse, saving both camps would only be the beginning. According to Lacolinius, the real war would happen far away, in the homeland of the gods. The giants intended to attack the original Mount Olympus and destroy the gods forever. Percy knew the giants couldn't die unless demigods and gods fought together. Nico had told him that. Annabeth had mentioned it too back in August when she'd speculated that the giants might be part of the new great prophecy, what the Romans called the Prophecy of the Seven. That was the downside of dating the smartest girl in camp. You learn stuff. He understood Juno's plan. Unite the Roman and Greek demigods to create an elite team of heroes, then somehow convince the gods to fight alongside them. But first, they had to save Camp Jupiter. The coastline began to look familiar. They raced past the Mendocino Lighthouse. Shortly afterward, Mount Tam and the Marin Headlands loomed out of the fog. Arian shot straight under the Golden Gate Bridge into San Francisco Bay. They tore through Berkeley and into Oakland Hills. When they reached the hilltop above the Calilet Tunnel, Arian shuddered like a broken car and came to a stop, his chest heaving. Hazel patted his sides lovingly. You did great, Arian. The horse was too tired to even cuss. Of course I did great. What did you expect? Percy and Frank jumped off the chariot. Percy wished they'd, they'd been comfortable seats or an in-flight meal. His legs were wobbly. His joints were so stiff he could barely walk. If he went into battle like this, the enemy would, enemy would call him Old Man Jackson. Frank didn't look much better. He hobbled to the top of the hill and peered down at the camp. Guys, we'll need to see this. When Percy and Hazel joined him, Percy's heart sank. The battle had begun, and it was not going well. The Twelfth Legion was arrayed on the field of Mars, trying to protect the city. Scorpions fired into the ranks of the Earthborn. Hannibal the Elephant plowed down monsters left and right, but the defenders were badly outnumbered. On her pegasus, Scipio, Reina flew around the giant polyboats, trying to keep them occupied. The Lars had formed shimmering purple lines around a mob of black, vaporous shades in ancient armor. Veteran demigods from the city had joined the battle and they were pushing their shield wall against the onslaught of wild centaurs. Giant eagles circled the battlefield, doing aerial combat with two snake-haired ladies in bright green bargain mart vests, Stentho and Ural. The Legion itself was taking the brunt of the attack, but their formation was breaking. Each cohort was an island in a sea of enemies. The Cyclops siege tower shot glowing green cannonballs into the city, blasting craters in the forum, reducing houses to ruin. As Percy watched, a cannonball hit the Senate house, and a dome partially collapsed. We're too late, Hazel said. No, Percy said. They're still fighting. We can do this. Where's Lupa? Frank asked, desperation creeping into his voice. She said the wolves will be here. They should be here. Percy thought about the time with the wolf goddess. He'd come to respect her teachings, but he also learned that the wolves had limits. They weren't frontline fighters. They only attacked when they had vastly superior numbers, and usually under the cover of darkness. Besides, Lupa's first rule was self-sufficiency. She would help her children as much as she could, train them to fight, but in the end, they were either predator or prey. Romans had to fight for themselves. They had to prove their worth or die. That was Lupa's way. She did what she could, Percy said. She slowed down the army on its way south. Now it's up to us. We gotta get the Gold Eagle and seize those weapons and give them to the Legion. But Orion's out of street steam, Hazel said. We can't haul the stuff by ourselves. Maybe we don't have to. Percy scanned the hilltops. If Tyson had gotten his dream message in Vancouver, help might be close. He whistled as loud as he could. A good New York cab whistle that would have been heard all the way from the Times Square to Central Park. 
Shadows rippled in the trees. A huge black shape bounded out of nowhere. A mastiff the size of an SUV with a cyclops and a harpy on her back. Hellhounds! Frank scrambled backwards. It's okay, Percy grinned. These are friends.